Hello and welcome to a brief guide to getting started with GitClear. I am Bill. I've been programming for about 25 years and over the last five years I've been working with a team to shape GitClear into a tool that measurably improves the long-term health and velocity of a Git repo. You can look at the numbers for yourself and prove that you will ship higher quality code in less time when you use the tools that I'm going to show off in this demo. Of course, there's plenty of software in the world that promises to make you more productive. We try to differentiate by providing empirically validated, evidence-based software measurement that helps developers as much as it helps their managers. With GitClear, the nice thing is that you don't have to wonder whether this product is working and doing what we say it's going to do. You can look at the numbers for yourself and you can prove that this is helping you ship higher quality code in less time. Here you can see the results of one recently signed up GitClear customer. This case was especially interesting since the manager chose to invite about half their developers to come to GitClear while the other half continued to use the team's existing tooling. So what you can see is that within three months, the developers who were given access to GitClear demonstrated visibly higher line impact and with it a commensurate increase in the number of tickets that were resolved. So, this is pretty interesting stuff. Let's dig into the details of exactly how GitClear helps developers and teams unlock their greatest potential velocity. Now, one of the first concepts that you're going to come across as a beginner with GitClear is this concept of line impact. Line impact is GitClear's standard unit of measurement. And the reason that we created line impact was because we needed a means to compare our progress across repos. So we know when the choices that we're making are driving up productivity or are impairing it. But it's a mistake to say that Line Impact directly measures productivity. Line Impact measures the rate of repo evolution, with special emphasis on changes that remove legacy code, add documentation, or write tests. Having a high Line Impact is like having a vector with a large magnitude. The vector could be pointed towards improved business outcomes, or it might be pointed towards sloppy bug fixes that add to the team's tech debt. Either could score high Line Impact. So the role of an effective manager when armed with the transparency GitClear provides is to craft experiments that produce the highest magnitude vectors, that is, the greatest repo evolution, from their dev team. And to do that while staying sufficiently involved in code review to ensure that the repo evolution is pointed towards a desired business outcome or KPI. So what does that mean? What does it mean to evolve a Git repo? Or put another way, what is it that Line Impact is measuring? Well, it's the changes that developers make that are non-trivial, time-consuming, brain-power intensive changes. They're changes that will affect a lot of lines in your repo, but they're not just white space changes. It's not just moving lines from one file to another. It's not find and replacing a bunch of instances of a variable. It's really the more substantive changes, such as understanding a module well enough to delete the module or to remove a great portion of that code. Those kinds of activities are often the hardest and the most valuable ones that developers will undertake when they're trying to simplify or condense legacy code. To prove that Line Impact is measuring progress, we conducted an empirical study in 2020 that analyzed thousands of JIRA tickets and found that line impact is better correlated with story point completion than any of the conventional Git metrics. All right, so let's talk about what you can do with a metric that tracks the rate at which your repo evolves. It's quite a bit as it turns out. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to review five of the most common use cases that we see customers adopt and benefit from when they sign up for GitClear. You can divide these use cases into five buckets. The first is to review work that's in progress. The second is to accelerate the onboarding of new developers. The third is to ensure that the team is effectively collaborating in pull requests. The fourth is to run experiments to uh, try out different techniques to help the dev team get more done. And the fifth is to find and eliminate tech debt. So to start, let's review how GitClear helps you review work in progress. When you log into GitClear, the default report that you're going to arrive at is what we call the Commit Activity Browser. Whether you're a developer or a manager, this is the visual that's most likely to be useful on a day-to-day -day basis. 
If you're a developer, you visit this because it's invigorating to see when you're making tangible progress, especially on those days where you're doing work that has no visual component. You can come here at the end of the day and you can see, ah, okay, something did get done. I do feel satisfied that the toil and the labor that I've invested is going towards a productive outcome, even if that outcome is invisible tech debt removal. It's also a great way to self-review your own work at the end of a day when it's still fresh in your mind and you can spot opportunities to make incremental improvements to it before it gets to pull request. If you're a manager, you visit the Commit Activity Browser because you want to hone your intuition for the tasks that your different developers thrive on. When you're trying to maximize developer productivity, you need to maximize for developer interest and ownership. Every developer has their own compass for the type of work they're going to find most interesting. And so when you tap into that, you get the developer's maximum effort, attention, and concentration. Conversely, when you see a day that's blank, you can infer that some aspect of your business process is not working as intended. And you can have a conversation with the applicable parties to reduce the incidences of this happening. I've made three videos about the Commit Activity Browser. One of them is a general overview. One is how to use it for managers. Another is how developers can benefit from it. You can check out the links to all those different videos in this description. This is really one of the deepest reports on GitClear. We've spent years developing it and iterating on it so that it can tell an entire story about what's happening across all of your repos at a glance. Second use case that we see new teams gravitating towards on GitClear is accelerating developer onboarding. This was actually the original use case for why we built GitClear was because we wanted to understand a developer's strengths without having to wait six months of gradually reviewing progress. Knowing whether a developer is Getting up to speed is usually one of the most time intensive undertakings that a manager or lead developer is going to undertake because it's normal that every developer is going to be slow when they first join a project. And it's very subtle and difficult to disambiguate between that normal ramp up slowness and a prolonged ramp up slowness that would suggest that a conversation might be useful. What I'm showing here is an example of a remote developer that we hired for one of our projects a few months ago. Through the Commit Activity Browser, we could see that he wasn't making many commits, but it wasn't until we visited the cohort report that we confirmed that the developer was not keeping pace with the past hires that we made. And in this case, we had a conversation with the developer where he actually admitted that he hadn't been working the hours he billed us, which is a very rare case. The much more common case is that developers start slow because it's hard to set up their development environment, or there are high barriers to entry for a pull request, or maybe the documentation is lacking. Whatever the impediment is, the more you use Use the cohort report, the more you can dial in the experience of a new developer to ensure that their onboarding is smooth enough for them to start making commits on day one. Incidentally, one of the fastest ways to get a developer up to speed is to give them access to GitClear because that allows them to review the work of their peers through the Commit Activity Browser to get a sense for the code style, and they can use a directory browser to find their way to the directories in which work has been happening lately. Ensuring effective collaboration is probably the most common reason that managers come to GitClear. They want better visibility into the long-term trends that are happening between their developers. The pull request tab can tell you everything you need to know about the current state of PRs across your repos. For example, here you can see a pull request that has been awaiting review for two business days now. That's not ideal. On the highlights page over on the left tab here, you can set up notifications so that you get emailed when a pull request has been lingering for an unusually long time without receiving any reviews from uh, the developer to which it was assigned. But you can also see higher level takeaways, like who is getting and receiving the most pull request comments. A developer who consistently receives a lot of comments on their pull requests is taking a disproportionate time from the reviewer's opportunity to code. And so it makes sense to work with these developers to set goals to submit pull requests in a state that require less modification before getting merged. 
One final opportunity I'll mention that emerges from these stats is charting progress towards goals for submitting pull requests that aren't too big. By default, GitClear warns developers when their pull request is more than 500 line impact, which generally equates to three to five days of work, but you can change this threshold. It's not important what the exact number is. The key point is that you want developers to think in terms of how much work this pull request is going to be to review so that they can split their ticket into smaller chunks if it's going to take Take hours and hours of time for whatever poor schmuck has to review this pull request later. Okay, now let's turn to how you can use GitClear to run experiments to ensure that your team is living up to its potential. Kind of like Darwinian evolution, the best way to optimize the long-term health of your dev team is to regularly experiment. Your imagination is really the only thing that limits the types of experiments that you could be running and tracking with something like the Velocity tab. Some other types of experiments that you might try to run could include checking how much gets done with pair or mob programming versus solo programming. You could test how much gets done if you let developers pick their own tasks versus being assigned tasks. You could check how line impact changes if you periodically take time to pay down your tech debt. Most any sufficiently incentivized manager could concoct at least 10 experiments to test different strategies for keeping their team engaged. Or if you email bill at getclear.com, I'll send you a list of popular experiments to try out. As you run the experiments, you can regularly check into the Velocity tab on GitClear to inform whether the experiment should become policy or whether it should just get reverted like a bad commit. The more of these incremental improvements to line impact or developer happiness that you discover, the more that your team becomes engaged and strategic with how their time will be spent. The final use case that our customers especially seem to appreciate is our tech debt inspector. What the tech debt inspector is built to do is to help managers or developers detect where the most crippling tech debt exists within their project. This is a little bit trickier to determine than it might first appear because a lot of tech debt in a project is irrelevant and would make no sense to fix. If the code never changes, then that tech debt can usually be deprioritized. It's the code that's changing frequently that your developers are constantly getting muddled in and being slowed down by that make the best candidates for refactoring. When you click into a file in the tech debt inspector, you'll get clues as to what might be contributing to the tech debt in this file. Oftentimes it's a very large file and so you can see how the size of the file is changing over time. It can be an overly complex file that has many branching and conditional cases. It can be a file that is tightly coupled to other files so that when you change one file you also have to change two or three others which generally implies that there's an opportunity to dry up some pattern that could then be shared between all those modules. You can see these dimensions plus a handful of others when you use the tech debt inspector to probe for the biggest opportunities to improve your repo's overall health. Okay, so that about wraps it up. I didn't have time to talk about the Google Dora stats, which GitClear also offers. These are stats that can let you detect the incidence of critical defects, how often they're happening, how long they take to get fixed, how often your team deploys, what the lead time is between when a developer starts working on a ticket versus when it gets deployed. All of these things are more reports that teams can find themselves benefiting from. But if there's one thing that I hope users will take from this video, it's to invite your developers, invite your executives, and make this a team experience where everyone gets to reap the benefits of improved transparency. The opportunity that developer analytics tools like GitClear create is to enhance transparency between developers, managers, and other stakeholders so that task estimation improves and the team buys into experimenting on behalf of better quality code and a highly engaged development team. We have built GitClear to be a suite of tools that lets developers be proactive in leveling themselves up by arming them with tools that let them make an informed assessment of what they can do to increase their rate of repo evolution, pay down tech debt, and deliver the most unique value to their team. Thanks for watching, and if you have any other questions about your development team or productivity or software metrics, drop us a line in the comments and we'll make some more videos. Thanks, bye-bye.